I've received a huge number of questions uh, along the themes of cryptocurrency, gold, safe haven, and what do I do during COVID-19? So let me try to address this. And the media, it's got certainly a lot of stories. For example, uh, supply chains have been disrupted, making it more difficult to do arbitrage with gold. So gold traveling from Europe uh, to the U.S. is more difficult. The Royal Canadian Mint has been called to deliver uh, gold to, um, to the U.S. You know, things like this. There's talk of uh, short squeezes as the supply chain has disrupted gold, as people are scrambling uh, to buy gold. Uh, all of this stuff, uh, I think we need to take a step back. So... In the depths of the COVID-19 crisis, uh, the equity market was crashing and cryptocurrencies also crashed and gold also shed value. So at that point, I said that gold was not a reliable hedge, as I've said in a number of research papers that look at gold going back uh, millennia. And... Uh, I also said that um, we have a limited history on cryptocurrencies and they uh, have not really been through a recession in terms of the high quality data. And um, basically the evidence was that um, they failed as a safe haven. And since the depth, which was really March 23rd, uh, the equity markets have come back. So some people have put risk on. So they've fled risky assets, and when the market dropped sufficiently, they actually got back into um, equities, and the market has uh, recovered uh, somewhat. Not all the way, but somewhat. And so is gold. And so has cryptocurrency. So you see the point here that we've got a very influential observation, and uh, we've actually seen um, positive correlation. So if gold or cryptocurrencies were uh, hedge assets, then what you would see when equity markets go down, when the economy tanks, then you would expect the price to go up, not down as it did up to March 23rd. So I think the case um, for gold and for cryptocurrencies as being uh, sort of uh, safe haven assets uh, is not a strong one. And we've got recent evidence on this. So um, I don't, I'm not particularly concerned about the supply chains. Um, I'm not concerned about a so-called short squeeze. You certainly don't see it in the data. Uh, and people have been talking about this uh, for over a month. So um, what about just the ease of uh, arbitrage. So the idea is that if you can get uh, a little extra in terms of um, price per ounce of gold, then you could ship some gold from, let's say, Europe uh, to the U.S. and take advantage of that. So uh, I think that um, for cryptocurrency, um, that's not necessary. There's no physical uh, shipment. So arbitrage is much more straightforward uh, for something that is a pure uh, digital asset. So that's definitely an advantage. However, this is really important. The volatility of gold is about 15% on an annualized basis, which is about the same as the equity market. The volatility of cryptocurrencies is huge. It's, it's four or five times the volatility of gold. So again, you need to be very careful here that uh, this, is, uh, this is not something that I would call uh, a safe haven asset when you've got such extreme uh, volatility. Look, gold is not a reliable hedge. And again, I've looked at you know, centuries of data and, and various crises, and gold is unreliable, and it's only got 15% volatility, and we've got lots of data to actually look at these different historical episodes. For cryptocurrencies, we don't have uh, much data. However, 
Cryptocurrencies um, are many different types. So we think of Bitcoin or Ethereum as the most popular ones. However, there's a new class of cryptocurrencies that are collateralized. So uh, these are the so-called stable coins. And you could think of collateralizing a cryptocurrency with US dollars, euros, yen. You could also think of collateralizing with physical assets like gold. So you could think of a coin that is, uh, and I can put uh, air quotes around this, uh, stable, of this backed by gold. And the reason I do the quotes is uh, because the stable coin is only as stable as the underlying asset. So if gold's got 15% volatility, then the stable coin also has 15% volatility. And indeed, I think over the last dozen years, uh, we have seen many people um, actually prefer to buy uh, a gold ETF like GLD. And the ETF means that you don't need to hold the physical gold. Somebody else will hold it for you in a vault in London or New York. Okay, so it's kind of the same idea as a gold stablecoin. So a gold stablecoin needs to have vaulting for uh, the coin and uh, needs to have an audit and security and things like that. But the advantage of the gold stablecoin is that you can use it uh, for instant uh, or pretty well instant uh, transactions. So it's much more uh, stable than, let's say, Bitcoin or Ethereum. And, and I do see that this is a growth area. So in the world of decentralized finance, uh, I see that stable coins are a real threat to mutual funds and ETFs. And the ETFs that are backed by gold might be disrupted by stable coins uh, that are backed by gold. So, so I do think that there is a growth area in terms of um, cryptocurrencies for um, the class of cryptocurrencies called uh, stable coins. So um, I do think that this is getting more attention now. Um, and do I think that there will be a rush to, um, to buy Bitcoin or Ethereum as a result of this uh, COVID-19 uh, crisis? I don't think so. Uh, again, uh, what we saw was massive volatility in the crisis. Um, and to be, to be totally fair, um, some of that downward movement wasn't just due to uh, the COVID-19 crisis. There were some technical issues in the liquidity issues in uh, the Bitcoin market. But nevertheless, uh, we don't have many of these influential observations. We've got essentially one. And during that crisis, um, Bitcoin uh, basically plunged in value. Um, if you think the stock market was bad, uh, you know what happened in Bitcoin was worse. So, so again, we need to be careful here. I do believe that, um, that people uh, understand the advantages of cryptocurrencies in particular. Again, I think there is a lot of um, positive possibilities for particular classes of cryptocurrencies to replace the physical holding of something where you delegate to somebody else the warehousing of the uh, precious metal or, um, or something else. And then you've got a coin that's collateralized that you can transact at very low cost, very quickly uh, and securely.